Hello everyone, I'm Lorene HD and I want to have a chat with you today about which responsibilities you have as someone living with herpes or any other incurable STI. So chances are you didn't get sex ed in school or at home. And if you did, chances are that it covered STIs through a disproportionately medical approach and a fear-led tone that made you want to do anything but listen. And for sure, no one prepared you for the possibility of contracting an STI how to disclose to partners, how to take care of your mental health, which boundaries you should set for yourself, etc, etc. And this is why we're here. So first off, I want to clarify that when I'm talking about people living with herpes, I mean people who tested positive for either HSV1 or HSV2, regardless of where the symptoms are showing up in their body, okay? I don't mean exclusively people whose symptoms are showing up on genitals. Cold sores are herpes. So let's get into it. What are the responsibilities of someone living with herpes? And we are going to go about it in a pretty simple way. We're gonna see how to date responsibly, how to f responsibly, and how to self-care responsibly. So the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about dating for people who are living with herpes is disclosure. So why is disclosure important? Because herpes, whether it's oral or genital herpes, even though it's not a big deal medically speaking, it is still a deal that people should choose to potentially deal with. So is disclosing your status your responsibility? Definitely. It's your responsibility to bring it up. It's your responsibility to bring it up before anything intimate sexual happens between the two or more of you and it's your responsibility to be clear in the information that you are giving. I also want to emphasize that we tend to think of disclosure as a once in a relationship kind of thing but it's a conversation that you're supposed to pick back up as you're experiencing symptoms. So your job is not just to let your partner, partners know that you've tested positive for HSV1 or HSV2 and let them decide if they want to be intimate with you. It's also to keep them up to date as to when is or when is not a good time to have sexual encounters. Now, upon contracting herpes or any other incurable STI, many people tend to think that their dating pool options should shrink to people who have the same condition. That's what they think is responsible because why on earth would they put people who haven't tested positive at risk? But is it though? No. At first, I know it can seem like a reasonable thought, but it's not. Why? Because you are not responsible for anyone else's health but your own. So you would be putting someone at risk if you didn't disclose or if you didn't disclose in a timely manner. But if you did, they are choosing to be intimate with you in an informed and adult way. You just have to accept that someone is choosing to be with you regardless of your status and not feel guilty about it, despite what our sex negative culture teaches us that you know contracting something sexually is to be despised. So let's talk about barrier methods. And I apologize in advance, this is going to be very heteronormative, but the reason for that is that a lot of studies conducted are focusing on heterosexual couples, so there's not a lot of data for same-sex uh, couples. So as you may or may not know, there are more chances of transmission of HSV2 when it comes from a male body to a female body. Uh, and the condom, the male condom, external condom, is more effective also in that case when the male body is um, living with HSV2 uh, and is preventing to transmit it to a female body. So now, does living with an incurable STI make you the beacon of protection usage? Are you... Um, supposed to enforce and make sure that protection is used at each and every encounter? Mm. No. So first of all, make sure that you're thinking of protection not just in terms of transmitting something to your partner, but also in terms of contracting something from them. Okay, because we tend to forget that there's a lot more STIs than the one we have that are pretty common out there. 
So have you had that conversation with your partners? When were they last tested and sharing your results? And if you're a uterus owner, are you on any kind of birth control? Like once you've assessed the broader view of protection, then decide if this is something that um, you want for yourself and that makes sense with your body. Uh, first and foremost. So what I'm also implying here is that just because you are living with an incurable STI doesn't mean you should be forcing yourself to have only protected sexual encounters. Using protection is a decision that you and your partner are 100% entitled to making and having an STI is not changing any of that. It's still very much you have, you two have or more, have full agency to decide whether your encounters are protected or not. And it's a conversation that you can pick back up at every sexual encounter if both of you feel the need to. Conversely, you do not have to convince a partner to use protection or you can convince a partner to use protection if it's for your health, but not if it's for their health. Remember when I told you that you are only responsible for your sexual health? It applies here too. There are going to be partners who will care about transmission, you know, from like not a lot to mild to a lot. And there are partners for whom transmission is not even going to be top of mind. And it's not your job to either make it not a big deal or a big deal. They are entitled to thinking whatever they want to think about it and to make the informed decisions that they want. Your job again is just to disclose in a timely and clear manner to advocate for the protection that you want to use for your health and to create space to receive their preferences in terms of protection and then together you can make a decision. So with owning our status uh, comes a need first and foremost for ourselves to be educated and knowledgeable about the condition that we're living with. And often, you know, it's very empowering to be able to answer potential partners' questions with medically accurate information. But is that really our responsibility? No. So we absolutely can, right? We can be the people that they turn to with questions. We can send them um, resources, but we don't have to. There's a wonderful place called Google, which will have all the answers possible. Of course, you have to pick your sources, but partners very much can go on their own journey of accruing knowledge on their own independently from us and especially not draining our emotional capacity to answer questions which sometimes come from you know there's no bad intention or whatever but still are stigmatizing and are triggering us uh, for some of the healing that we're still in process so we do not have to just because we live with this condition it doesn't make us all you know sexuality educators or doctors uh, we can very much establish a boundary and asking partners to go and do their own research independently from us i want to talk about suppressive therapy so suppressive therapy is when instead of taking antivirals only when you're experiencing an outbreak you take antivirals on a daily basis and people do that um, to prevent frequency, severity, and duration of outbreaks. Now, suppressive therapy is not an option for everyone. And this is the part that gets frustrating for people living with herpes. Suppressive therapy is prescribed by your doctor only if you are experiencing six or more outbreaks a year, meaning once every other month. And many people, when they test positive for herpes, even if they're not experiencing six or more outbreaks a year, default to want to be on suppressive therapy. Why? Because it gives them the peace of mind to be doing everything possible not to be a risk to their partner and also to prove to their partner that they're doing everything they can not to be transmitting um, the virus to them. So what I want to say is being on suppressive therapy doesn't make you a responsible person living with herpes and not being on suppressive therapy does not make you an irresponsible person living with herpes. 
you have to see if first of all your body copes well with being on suppressive therapy because it's still you know some people care to take a drug every day other people don't and wherever you fall on that spectrum should be your decision for your health again i'm going to repeat myself you are responsible for your own health so if being on suppressive therapy is causing you side effects or if it makes you uneasy because it requires you to take a medication every day, you are totally entitled to choose to be on suppressive therapy or not. And um, that doesn't mean that you are responsible or irresponsible. It is a choice, it is an option. It's great to have options, but it is not an obligation. Likewise, some partners will only feel comfortable being intimate with you if you are on suppressive therapy, which might make you feel pressured to be on it. Um, so do you have a responsibility to be on suppressive therapy? Mm. No. No, no, no. You have a responsibility to do what is best for your body. So if you're experiencing outbreaks frequently and they're painful and they're hard to manage and you want to reduce the frequency of outbreaks, 100% be on suppressive therapy. But don't be on suppressive therapy because someone else is holding it as a condition to be intimate with you. What you put in your body is a personal choice and some people care to take drugs every day, other people don't. And wherever you fall on that spectrum is your decision. But you are entitled to make any decision you want for your body um, and not taking suppressive therapy does not make you irresponsible. If this video was helpful, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, and let me know in the comments below what responsibilities do you feel that you have as a person living with herpes and if there are responsibilities that are put upon you, how do you go about managing them? That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Ciao!